pandemic. There are actually a number of new developments just over the last few minutes. Joining us now, Senior Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. Sanjay Gupta, also with us, Dr. David Andrews. He's an Associate Professor of Clinical Pathology at the University of Miami School of Medicine. Um, one of the reasons we suspect that the White House is trying to get more people vaccinated and opening it up to younger people more quickly is because of the spread of the different variants and the idea that younger people are being infected with this these different variants. And Dr. Andrews, you've got some numbers on this. You've actually got some statistics about the president, uh, presence of the B117 variant in and around you. Why don't you tell us what you're finding? Yes, in Miami uh, Dade County, uh, as you know, we've had a, a big influx of, uh, of young people for the spring break uh, event. But in our, in our uh, sampled population, which includes both students and uh, patient samples, we're seeing upwards of 50 to 60 percent of samples testing positive for the B117 variant, the UK variant. Um, Dr. Andrews, one more question for you about the variants, because I've recently become concerned about the so-called California variant, the B1427, after reading that it is more transmissible, causing more hospitalizations, more deaths, and possibly vaccine resistant. Are you seeing any evidence of the California variant? Yes. So what has been fascinating to see is this evolution from from a, a significant expansion of the UK variant. Now we're actually seeing that to start to plateau and uh, the emergence of virtually all of the variants of concern that uh, we're tracking in the United States. Second place, if you will, between roughly 10 and 20 percent of our samples. Again, that's in our sample population, which is not necessarily representative of pure representation of the Miami-Dade County residents, but we're seeing over 10 percent California variant. We're also seeing a significant number of the New York variants. I'll avoid mentioning them by their by their official lineage designation. Uh, we, we're, we've also we're also encounter, encountering, not surprisingly, in Miami-Dade, the Brazilian P1 variant, which carries the uh, the amino acid changes, the mutation that is most associated with immune escape, uh, of, which is of, of more concern uh, uh, downstream. Uh, uh, that uh, with regard to uh, emergence of, uh, of lineages that might be resistant to, resistant to vaccines and immunotherapies. All right, Sanjay, put this all in perspective for us, because I think people hear this and they get very concerned. Oh, 60 percent of the cases are, are, are the B117 variant that we saw in the UK. Oh, we're seeing other variants. How much does that matter? What does it tell us about who is getting infected? And the flip side of that is, really, we still think that vaccines work against all of these variants, right? Right, right. So um, I think that there's a couple of really important points here uh, uh, coming out of Dr. Andrew's work. First of all, we have, we have uh, worried and, and been concerned for some time that these variants would become the dominant strains, right? We have the naturally occurring, you know, the, the type of strain that's been circulating mostly in the United States starting to be increasingly crowded out by these variants, which we know are more transmissible and possibly more lethal as well. So that, that's one thing. The second thing is th this other point that you're bringing up. First of all, we're still not seeing high reinfection rates. Why is that important? It means even people who've been previously infected with the, with the, the circulating coronavirus, the more common circulating coronavirus, they still seem to have protection against these variants just from their natural infection before. We'll see if that continues to hold up. But also the vaccines that have been trialed, at least against the UK variant, for example, that Dr. Andrews was talking about, does seem to provide significant protection. It's a little bit less compared to against the, the more commonly circulating virus, but it still does offer protection. And I think that's encouraging. There are some other mutations I know that's come out of Dr. Andrews' work, which we got to keep an eye on. Uh, mutations that we've seen in places like South Africa, for example, that may make the virus a little bit more likely to escape that protection. And that's what we really got to focus on here to make sure that that's not happening. Sanjay, you also have some new information about herd immunity. Do we know where we are in the U.S. right now? Well, you know, it, it's an interesting point because I think, I, I don't know that we know for sure, but I think one thing that's, that's important to continue to point out is that we are looking at the vaccination numbers, and those are obviously very important numbers to look at, but we also know based on various modeling studies from the CDC and from University of Washington, that there's probably around 100 million people in the country, roughly, that have been previously infected and have some degree of immunity. 
So you've got to add that number in as well. Now, now a, 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 small, a certain percentage of them have also been vaccinated, so they got both. They got previously infected and vaccinated. But the point is that if you add vaccination numbers and add in previously infected numbers, you're starting to get closer to 200 million people who may have degree of immunity to this, this coronavirus. Uh, that may get us closer to herd immunity and do it more quickly. Um, still, it doesn't account for people under the age of 16 who still don't have a vaccine available to them, but there's a certain percentage of them that may have immunity because of having been previously infected. So it's overall, it's, it's, it's good news. You don't want to get infected to get that immunity, but there's a lot of people who have, and that's going to help us get toward herd immunity. All right, I promised a number of new developments. Uh, Dr. Fauci, Dr. Anthony Fauci, just did an interview where uh, he said something that I had not heard him say as directly before, and it perked my ears up as the parent of two 14-year-old soccer players, and it has to do with, you know, youth sports. I think we have the sound. Do we have the sound? Let's play it. What we're finding out that it's the, the team sports where kids are getting together, you know, obviously many without masks that are driving it rather than in the classroom spread. When you go back and take a look and try and track where these clusters of cases are coming from in the school, it's just that. So, Dr. Anders, that's interesting, right? Because outdoor activities have been seen as largely safe. We had heard there hadn't been any on-field or very few on-field transmissions. Now Dr. Fauci is saying that team sports driving part of what we're seeing among younger people. What do you make of it? So I think that fits perfectly with the, uh, the increased transmissibility, transmissibility associated with, for example, the UK variant, this B117 and the others. Uh, where previously maybe there might not have been as much transmission, but that's definitely the concern right now is the rate that these are transmitted. And Sanjay, of course, the concern also is that younger people seem to be getting sicker. I mean, just the fact that younger people are going to the hospital by definition, I assume, that means they're having breathing difficulties. We hadn't seen really young people under 20 having those symptoms a year ago. Yeah, it, it does appear that this, this uh, at least the, the UK variant, uh, may be uh, uh, causing uh, a more serious illness in people. I have been talking to doctors at various hospital systems in Michigan. That's my home state. I talk to them all the time. It is true uh, that you are seeing increased hospitalizations among younger people. But overall, I will say that the what we call the index of severity, or just how severely ill the patients are, is still uh, less, significantly less than what we saw when elderly people or more vulnerable people were hospitalized. So we'll see. I mean, it's not to minimize that in any way. And trust me, you don't want this virus. No one is suggesting that you get this virus. That's not the way to, to get your immunity. But I think the fact that 75% of people over the age of 65 now have at least some immunity is going to be really helpful in terms of curbing severe illness uh, and, and deaths uh, uh, longer term. We certainly hope so. Dr. Sanjay Gupta, Dr. David Andrews, thank you both very much for all the information this morning.